be, um, kind of where we're bringing it, and uh, some of the opportunities and so forth. So I have to start this off by saying I remember two or three months ago, and I may want to pull up a website if that's okay, Linda. Yes, that's fine. Okay. There's a HDMI cable. Okay. I um. I may not, I didn't bring a lot of time. So anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll go through what we're going to go through. So so a couple, probably about three, four months ago, I went to a meeting just talking about structuring businesses and everything. And I was in that meeting, and it was scheduled for three hours long. And about 30 minutes into the meeting, I got everything I could possibly ever need to get out of that three-hour meeting in about that first 30 minutes. During the last two and a half hours of that meeting, I swore to myself, do this. Well, first of all, the first thing I did is I actually thought through how meetings, presentations, and everything should be run. And then second of all, I swore to myself that I'd never go to a three-hour meeting that only needed to be a half an hour, and I would never present longer than was necessary. Because I think that time is really important. All of us have really important things to do. There's beautiful things to see outside. A lot of things we could spend on our time that we don't want to have to go over things that are not necessary. Is that okay, first of all? Is everyone on board with that? Because I don't know, I'm sure, has everyone, has everyone been in a meeting that was too long or not important? Is that fair, we're all coming with that? Okay, cool. So what I want to do is, um, can I get a scribe volunteer? There's some stuff down for me. All right, I'll give you that pan. So as I was sitting in this three-hour meeting, I had, well, let me give you another one. Sorry. I need that. I thought through my head how meetings should be run, how presentations should be run, and so everyone can get the most out of it. We don't cover things that people already know. I kind of cover some things that you may not know. I wouldn't know um, because it's what I do. And then also that we make sure we answer everyone's questions so everyone leaves here with the maximum amount, the maximum amount of use of your time, the maximum education, and we all just are really happy because we didn't waste time. So that's my goal. So let's start off by doing one thing. I don't need to answer this, but if you want to answer this question, I want to have it written down because I want to, I want to start off by making almost like a contract with you guys. I'm going to be willing to, here's what I want to cover. And I want to make sure that I answer all of the questions that you guys might have. We present the format of the meeting so that we're all cool with it and that we're all happy. Okay, so number one, why are you here? Why did you come today? Let's make sure that we, we address these. So we make sure that the reason you came here, that we're making sure we're getting the most use of your time. So anyone want to volunteer? Any thoughts? Well, I came here because of the opportunity. Okay, so the opportunity. So we can, we'll definitely cover that. Anyone else? Meet interesting people. Meet interesting people. So hopefully we're going to, well, my goal with the meeting is, um, I taught college for about four years. When I first started, I did the PowerPoint lecture. Any questions? Towards the end, I realized that nobody really liked that. And so we just asked a bunch of questions to figure out what people know. And we can build upon your knowledge instead of what you already have and add to it. So any other reason why people are here? Go ahead. I came to support you, Steve. Oh, thanks, Mike. Mike and I have known each other for a couple months now. We've gone to a bunch of meetings together. So I appreciate that. Um, OK, number two, what do you want to get out of this meeting? Go ahead. More opportunities. More opportunities, okay. More, it's a big more, like, more people in my life. Okay, more opportunities, network, meet some people, create some ideas and so forth, okay. Anyone else? Any other any other reasons of why we want to get out of today? You have a better idea of what uh, sustainable home building design is doing here in downtown Salt Lake City. Okay. That's the motivation to So sustain, sustainable design building down, downtown Salt Lake City. Well, I think you're an amazing guy, and I, I, I felt like there was a whole bunch of people that needed to meet you okay, because of the projects that you're working on. So. Great. Thank you. That always makes you feel good when you hear good things about yourself. So, okay. Uh, let's see. 
Any questions that you might have before we get started? When do we start? All right, let's do it now. Okay, perfect. Um, so a couple things that I want to cover um, that you may not know uh, with design and build is number one, um, I want to talk about, first of all, the questions I want to answer that I always ask people is number one, how to use your space. Number two, how often do you use your space? And number three, talking about opportunity costs of more space versus less space and designing a home a certain way. My background is real estate, real estate sales, new construction, all sorts of stuff. Um, I have partners that are home, home plan designers, architects, and contractors. We ask different questions because some of the, what's been done in the past is based on the questions that were asked in the past. Uh, for instance, what I used to ask five years ago was, how big of a home do you want? How many bedrooms do you want? How many bathrooms do you want? Uh, how many car garage do you want? So those are the questions of the past. The questions of now are space. Let's talk about space. And then what we do is we take that information and we present options so people can see, well, actually, are we using our space? What we found by asking these better questions is we found a couple things. Most people that we talk to live in homes that are too big. Flat out. I can't tell you how many people I talk to that are retiring and they live in a 5,000 square foot home. They're a lot of money, but they're house poor and they live in a big house. Common, common, common. People build homes that are way too big for their needs because what's happened in the past is uh, there's, there's incentive to build bigger homes that cost more money because it sounds good, but then you realize you don't use it. And that's kind of why I come back to those three important questions. How to use your space, how often to use your space, and then number three, talking about opportunity cost of design requirements. So th those are basically the three fundamental questions that we talk about design. So just to get an idea, um, how many people have built a home or designed a home or purchased an existing home? Okay, so we have a lot of different experience here with what we're doing. Okay, perfect, gives me an idea. Um, so let's talk about some scenarios. I want to talk about uh, um, what's possible, um, some of the deals we're currently working on, and uh, some of the opportunities that we're developing in the near future. Um, specifically, right now, we're looking at we're looking at all different building types um, of materials, but also we're really focused right now on designing the right home for the right space. So I want to tell some stories um, about a couple of projects we're working on. Uh, just to give you guys an idea of our process, um, that's another thing that we're doing a little bit different from what other people are doing build-wise is our process. Because what we found over the years is to build a custom home was really hard, and we're trying to make it really easy um, to the point that it's about as easy as buying an existing home. So let's talk about some scenarios um, with some current projects that we're working on. Um, so we are starting a home in Murray um, right now, um, and I'll kind of tell you their story. Um, so it was, actually a, it was actually a friend of mine um, that approached me and said, I'd like to build a home. Um, first thing we do is, first of all, before we start, and the process is important because most people, the old way of people doing custom homes, it's very costly and inefficient. So we do it a little bit differently. So the old process of what people do when they want to build their dream home is what they do first. What, what are some guesses? People want to build their dream home, where, where do they start? They find some pretty lot out in the middle of nowhere and it's hard to get in and out and buy it. That could be a scenario where they just go out and buy a lot. Yeah. Okay, so that's scenario one. There's another one that's a little bit more common. Where do people start when they want to build their dream home? The house plan site. House plan site. Perfect. That's a lot of people start on the house plan site. They go on the house plan site, they pick a plan. And they're like, you know, this is our dream plan. They find a plan that's close. They pay for that plan, and they pay about $5,000 to get their plan perfect, or more. Depends on if they can't find exactly what they're looking for. So what do they do next? What's step two? Okay. Oftentimes, they actually go find a lot. 
That's what we found is most people get the plan, they try and find a lot, and then they try and find a contractor that can bid out that plan for that lot. Now, the problem with doing it that way is here's what happens. The architect or home plan designer costs when they're designing homes. So the plan that the person gets, it may not fit the lot that they buy, it may not fit the budget that they have, and so often what we found about five years ago would come back with a plan that we can't find a lot for and we can't fit it in their budget. And so that's where um, what we learned five years ago was we can't do it that way because we spent all this time, energy, emotion, and money to get customers, but we can't build them a home because the process is broken. So what we did is we brought all that in-house and then this last year or two, we've made it some innovations. So number one is we've actually pre-designed a bunch of homes that fit about 80% of what people are looking for. And so we have about six different ramblers that we pre-designed that are every 500 square feet is what we have. So we have one at 2,500 square feet, one at 3,000, 35, 4,000, 45, and 5,000 square feet. So what we've done is we've tried to make it easy because these six homes, and then we also have two-story homes, and then homes that are on narrow lots. So within about 15 to 18 plans, we have about 80% for that we've pre-designed and we've actually pre-bid out. Um, we've bid those properties out with about 80% of what people are looking for on the interior. So what that does for us, and what that does for our customers, is it saves them thousands of dollars time, stress, energy, so that they don't have to go out and design a plan. We already have it in, um, in-house. So the other thing that we've done, um, the other innovation we've done is what we found is by having better conversations, what we've learned is most people are going to build what we've already designed because it makes more sense. Um, my experiences in real estate is anytime I go through a custom home, <laughs> an honest experience here, Anytime I go through a custom home, you could tell it was a custom home because typically the colors were terrible and they had some goofy feature on it that cost them a lot of money to build. And they're like, that's a custom home right there. And we're like, well, it doesn't need to be that way. A custom home is something that people can put in whatever they want, design however they want. What we do is we, we ask questions. For instance, I'll give you an example. So we have a, our most popular Rambler that we build right now is about 3,100 square feet. A garage, three bed, two bath. Very common plan you'd see almost anywhere. What we've done is, for instance, we can build that for about $160,000 to $170,000. We can build that rambler. It fits most lots. If a lot's narrow, then we have a narrow version of that rambler as well. So what we've done is people are like, well, I love that house, but I want to make it 700 square feet bigger. We're like, okay, here's kind of where that third scenario question comes in of that opportunity cost. We can add 700 square feet on the main floor of that same rambler, make all the space bigger. It's going to cost you like seventy to eighty thousand dollars. So this is another technique that we've learned over the years: is education. So people can understand construction costs and say, "Oh, if you do this, it'll probably cost this." So if we were to add that 700 square feet on the main floor, it's going to be seventy to eighty grand. So we're like, we can do it. We're happy to do it. We're happy to do whatever they want, but. Where we come in is, is a kind of on that consulting level and say, or we can put it above the kitchen and garage, 700 square feet, the same 700 square feet, two bed, one bath, we can do it that way for $20,000. All they have to do is walk up a little bit of stairs, they get the same space, it's even more separate space. And so that's where we come in is by offering you know, scenarios on saving people money. So they can accomplish all of their same goals for about fifty to sixty thousand dollars less by putting space in different areas. The other thing we can do, um, the other thing we're really developing is talking about you know affordable housing. We've been really thinking through how we can make housing more affordable, and so we actually are developing some seminars we're going to be doing next month, um, talking about two scenarios that we can help people make their house. Really affordable. We've got two. We've got two houses we're starting right now. Um, they're both in Utah County that have accessory apartments. 
Um, I'll tell you a story about one of them. So one of them we're building in Orem, where that same rambler that I talked about, the 3,100 square foot rambler, he's building the bonus room and then finishing an accessory apartment with a separate entrance and also additional parking. Um, so it's legal by the city. And so his scenario is he's going to build this home with everything finished. He's going to be able to live in a 3,700 square foot home. Obviously, he's going to rent out the basement for about five, six hundred dollars out of his pocket a month. So those are some ways that we're looking at affordable housing is by taking advantage of design and build. Go ahead. About twenty-five. We can design less than that, but we found that uh, we found that most people want about that. So it'd be twelve fifty up, twelve fifty down. So that's twenty-five total. Um, we can build smaller homes. We just found that most cities have requirements that it makes it tough to build like a six hundred square foot. And, and plus your cost, you know, you really you really save more money if you build bigger. So go ahead. Also, too, um, how did you curate this data too? Is it all? What what forms of research did you find out? Uh, which which stats? which part of data? Uh, things like you said that you found that twenty five hundred. Uh, just years of experience. So I, I've been a full-time real estate agent for probably more than a decade. So just walking through thousands upon thousands of homes. And that's the other thing I'd say that we're doing a little bit different is my partners are two contractors that they design the homes and they build the homes. The reason they do that, I sought them out because I've done this with other groups and it wasn't as seamless as what we have now. So I sought them out because the people that I wanted designing the homes are the people that I wanted building them <laughs> because they know costs and they know what's hard to build and what's not hard to build. Because the problem we had is we'd come back with plans that were really hard to build. What that means is cost goes up. And, and once we talk through kind of the opportunity cost and give and take, we found that most people wanted things that made more sense and flowed well versus having some elaborate corner in their house or something because we talk through those scenarios. So that's just experience, is, is how we've accumulated that. Um, what we do on our plans is we bid them all out and we try and keep those, those uh, bids current because that's one of the other things that we, we've really tried to make this process easier by educating people on construction, points that once people know it's not a big deal. For instance, one of the things that we make sure we educate is construction prices go up and they go down. You know, so once we say a price, you know, 30 days from now, it could be different. You know, and so that's something that's really held people back is that uncertainty. So once what we do with certainty is what we do is once we get the final plan design that people want to build, that's when we do a final bid. And that's when we'll sign a contract that says, here's what we'll build this home that you designed for um, at that fixed price. That's when we can fix prices. Until then, it's very variable. Um, so that's one thing we've done. The other thing that we've done is what we found is some of the challenges other people have when they design and build or they want to build a custom home. The biggest battle that we fight and we have to keep fighting this is expectations. Um, people have expectations of what they can build for what cost that are typically higher than what reality is. And the other thing is, is bad information to create false expectations. So for instance, the common question that I get uh, when people are building is they want to compare apples to apples so the question I get is what's your price per square foot and the challenge on that question and as a professional uh, that's not we don't like to answer that question because most people don't compare apples to apples so I can make that number sound really low or I can make it sound really high with depends on what people are factoring into that equation so what we do is we say we can give you some sample ideas of you know the homes that we pre-bid out and the plan and all the included items to give you a rough idea, but we need to really do a full bid on the home uh, before we build it out. So those are a couple things that we, we really focus on. So some common mistakes that people make when they're building a custom home. I'd say number one, uh, expectations. You know, because they can people can hear things from a, a friend, a family member that may not be reality. And we run into this all the time. I'm like, oh, well, I built my home for this. Well, that was 15 years ago, not in this state. You know, so it's really creating the right expectations. Number two is having the correct information. You know, because oftentimes people hear things or they see things online or whatever, 
that may not be relevant to the market we in or the time, and it's bad information. Um, so that's number two. The other mistake is just doing the process wrong. You know, as what we talked about, buying a plan before you have a lot. What we do is we have rough ideas of what costs are, and then we lot shop once we have a lot under contract. Then we do the design because we don't want to design a plan until I have the lot. So we can talk about lots a little bit later um, on as well. Is so doing the process wrong. The third thing is having people that are difficult to work with. That makes costs go up. We put together a team of people that are easy to work with, that ask good questions, and are not hard to work with. Because that way the process is really stressful when it doesn't necessarily need to be um, when things are easy to work with. Fourth thing is just education. You know, if you know the process, we're unfortunately we're we're currently developing a lot of things, education pieces to give people, but they're not quite finished. I have more more things to hand out, so we'll have those on the website here in about two or three months. Uh, but just understanding the process. You know, it's like step one, we do this, have pictures. Step two, we do this. And so we're developing all those things to really help people understand the process so it's not hard to understand. Um, so those are some of the common mistakes that we see. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, the biggest mistake on design build, just building the wrong house. <laughs> you know, um, what we found by really thinking it through, we found that most people built, live in the wrong home. If you have 500 square feet that you don't use, I mean, even if you look at your current homes, and you're like, well, I've never gone to this bedroom in six months. <laughs> That's fifty thousand dollars. That's three to four hundred dollars a month. That's two really cool vacations a year that people can do, but they can't because they live in the wrong home. So those are a couple things. So that's in essence what I wanted to talk about is kind of talk about some things we're developing, we're building, um, some of our processes, some things we're looking at in the future. Um, we've met with we met with a company that uh, right now we're just tr doing traditional materials and how we build. But we're working on looking at a couple different options. We've met with a developer that's building out of uh, uh, storage units or the, the big crate or the containers. He's building out of containers, so we're looking at that. We don't know if that fits with what we want to do. We're also talking to somebody who builds out a block instead of um, the sticks and bricks. Um, we're looking at that. Uh, we're a little bit hesitant because it's not just the us that want to build. We have to have our clients that want to do that as well. So, but uh, I want to open that up. Um, want to make sure let's go over everything that we needed to. Let's see. <clears throat> Opportunity to meet people, build knowledge. How do we do? Lots of stuff. I kind of dumped it all at the same time. Uh, get out of the meeting, meet people, network, learn about sustainable design. I don't know if we covered that as much. Um, on the design end, the biggest thing is. Um, Sustainable, we're actually, some things we're incorporated into our house right now, sustainable design-wise. Um, we build our, all of our homes very efficiently, because the design is efficient. So there's not wasted space. And then also we have uh, partners that work with us on solar, fried solar solution and whole home automation with security uh, to make sure the utilities are as low as they possibly can get. So go ahead. What's your company called on your website? Uh, modernabuild.com. So it's it's modern build, modern a build.com. What's your solar company you work with again? So we have a couple that we we're, we're working with. Okay. Um, it just depends on what this what the what the client wants, you know. So we've got a number that we've met with. So it kind of just depends. So we've got some home automation, solar. Um, that's about what we're working with right now. And we've looked at some other things, but just a lot of the things, a lot of the new ideas, we're a little bit hesitant to put in. So go ahead. So you keep saying the right mass for you. How do you have any gauge of what's the right mass for a family of two, a family with one child or two children? Like where do you how do you educate the customers on what that right mass is? You know, it's kind of that comes back to question two, which is just utilization. So maybe just take a look at where what space people have right now and see how often it's utilized. For instance, you can say, okay, are all the bedrooms being used right now? You know, and, and are people running into each other in a living room or something? It's like, do we need to create another living space? You know, so there's two living spaces and enough bedrooms. So it's kind of utilization. You know, for instance. Um, I was in a friend's house about a month and a half ago, 
And this is just another example is, um, I just asked him the question in the basement. I was like, well, how often do you come down to the basement? He's like, oh, about once a month. So he has a $600,000 house. The basement's worth about 120 grand. And so that's not utilized enough because that's costing about $1,000 a month to heat it, cool it, tax it, mortgage it, everything that could be used for a lot of other things. So that's probably the best question. Find out what people are at currently and see what they might use space and really ask good questions. I mean, like, hey, how often are you going to use this room? You know, well, I want to host a family party. Well, how often is that going to happen? Oh, twice a year. Well, we can do that with this big space, but what if you just got to, you know, rent a place out and save yourself $500 a month? You know, so it's asking questions. So, do you have any like averages? What we found, most people are going to build our 3100 square foot Rambler, a different version of that. We found that that's, even if it's a, you know, a two person household or three, you know, we, because that's what most people are going to build. If they have more kids, we'll probably just do a bonus room above the garage and kitchen because we're going to get another two bedrooms and a living room and a bathroom. So, that's probably most people are going to build that. We have, people want to build that or bigger. We haven't had too many people that are like, want to build 25 and below. That's just, the one we normally present is the one that's about 3,100 square feet. So. And is that price point for the consumers not 161.70? Yeah, 161.70. So I'll give you a scenario. So here's the, here's the end result. Because we've thought through so many things, again, I'm not saying things are perfect. There's so many things we are coming up with every day to improve it. But because we've thought through so many things and have better conversations, here's where people come out ahead in all of this. So the home we're building in Murray, uh, by whatever luck we had, we were able to find a lot for about $75,000. Doesn't happen very often, popped up. We had to design a narrow home for that lot in Murray. And so we designed a 3,100 square foot narrow rambler, similar to what you'd see in Daybreak, nice Victorian, um, they're going to be into the lot plus the home build. Plus, that's the other part of the equation I didn't really cover was, you know, to find total cost, you've got to go lot cost plus what we call lot improvement costs plus construction costs. Um, and part of the construction cost is the permit cost. So those are the costs that we're looking at when we get the total cost. So out the door, they're into it about $260,000 for a 3,100 square foot rambler. The reason it's more is because we have to do lot improvement costs and then the permit costs on top of that. So range about 260. Everything in the neighborhood sells for about 325. So they are not only getting a custom home, but they're beating the market by about 20%. So the reason we can do all that is because of the way we operate. So that's kind of some of the results we've seen. Obviously, results vary from lot to lot, client to client, house to house. But there are some really good opportunities um, in the design build aspect. So, um, I'll give one last story, crazy story. We were up in the up on the top of Carly's Summit last night because we're going to build a home up there. Um, that neighborhood just to the south of Carly's Summit is called Summit Park. Um, there's a lot up there for seventy-five thousand. We're going to probably build in that that same Rambler, different version. So the nice thing about design is we can do the same plan. We can make the exterior look however we want. We can find pictures on Google. Be like, oh, do this, this, and that's easy, and it's usually not that expensive. Uh, but we keep the same plan because it's less expensive to build. So we're going to build them a home up there with all the improvement costs because it's a steep lot. They're going to be into it about three twenty. Most of the homes in that neighborhood are going for about five hundred thousand with that, and ours is going to be a better design. So there's a lot of opportunity with what we're doing. So anyway, let, any questions? Go ahead. So my improvement cost average would be what? So what you're looking at is, so the lot improvement costs are basically a component of what it's going to take to build a home on the lot and connect the utilities into the lot. So on this one in Murray, we had to get the utilities from the street into the lot, and so that's going to cost us about $12,000. Um, that's about the only lot improvement cost. So if it's on a big hill, if it's a steep hill, it's going to cost you a lot more because we've got to do another foundation and also make it sure it's not going to fall down the hill. If it's on a big steep hill on the upside, we've got to dig up the hill and then haul away a lot of dirt. So it really depends on the lot. What's the excavation usually on the mountain? It's so varied. That's the thing, because once you start digging, it depends on if there's a bunch of rock, if there's 
Uh, for instance, this one on the big hill, we're probably going to have to put another 30000 into it just to get the foundation put in because it has to be extra reinforced and everything. Probably even more than that once it's all said done. I mean, 30 for the excavation, another 20 or so for the uh, we have to do a we have to do another a whole other level because it's such a steep hill. So it's going to actually have three levels. So we're taking that same rambler and doing another floor on the bottom of it. So I know Utah is really dug in its heels on adopting the energy code with the building codes. Um, are you, is your company are you seeing other builders that are going above and beyond the minimum code requirements? Are consumers demanding more energy efficient homes? Is that something you're you're encouraging them for you know we we like to just promote dollars and cents you know for instance uh, it's kind of for us we one of the big things that we do with design that I think is a little bit different is talking about cost and benefit so for instance there's so many home automation things that we can do in a house to minimize utility bills you know and also if we start adopting building with block with style it's actually a polyurethane block that we build instead of the, the timber you know if we do that, we can also save on utility bills. So it's kind of a dollar and cents efficiency. You get a lot more energy if you're spending another five thousand dollars, and you can save yourself a hundred to two hundred dollars a month for the you have at home. So that's kind of where people are making the decision more based on economics. It's like we want to make sure we've got the home pose other options. For people, so it's it's consumer choice. With solar right now, there's a lot of incentives. So you have a lot of people doing the solar because of the incentives, and they are saving utilities because of that. So, I mean, the challenge on energy, it's just a lot of it's subjective. You know, where it depends on who's defining what it means. You know, for us, it's like we want to get the most value for the home design versus the cost. So I don't, you know, there's there's ways we can do a lot more energy efficient, but if it's going to cost us 30 extra grand, you know, it's the difference between building a home and not building a home. So it depends on the consumer. To answer your question a little bit. Or, go ahead. You said you were using um, your builders to do the, the design. Are you actually are you working with architects as well, or? Yeah, they can they consult with architects. It just depends on the scenario. Well, oftentimes we already have plans that people want to build that we build a bunch, you know. So it depends. I mean, I, I leave that up to them specifically on what they do. Okay. So, so yeah, have to have an ar architect review. Um, um, I mean, the engineer, the engineer uh, engineer the plans. So um, a lot of those specifics, I leave it specifically up to them because I, I kind of stay in my my lane. Um, they stay in their lane. So what are your margins? What's the benefit to you by going through this method? Um, the reason we have this model that we've developed is um, it helps us. We can't compete versus we're not the same as a production home builder, or uh, we are a custom builder, but we're not. We don't have the same business model as another custom builder. Um, we just we have to offer what we offer so we can compete, um, and so that's kind of the model we have right now. Um, it's just because we 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 compete well in different areas. There's other areas where there's a better deal out there, so. What's your take on the market right now? Is it going up or down? Is price or prices going up specifically or down? You know, the next two years. The, the the things that I look at really, you know, you know, you can read all sorts of things in the newspaper and everything. The biggest things I look for, I look at what people are building. You know, they're building so many commercial buildings. If you look on the I-15 corridor, just I mean, it's just popping up like crazy. You look at Point of the Mountain and Lehigh. Um, so I think it's specific on the area. Like I can see areas of northern Utah County just keep going up because you've got those jobs that are really close by. I can see Salt Lake County just based on supply. I mean, we we actually do a lot more, we're doing a lot more marketing in Utah County because there's more land. Where where we have limitations, again, not everything's perfect um, on what we can offer and everything. We do have we have constraints and limitations, for instance. What we do works when there is land available where people want to build. So, for instance, in Salt Lake County, we can't do a ton um, because there's not a ton of land for us to choose from. You know, so that's where we do probably more advertising in Utah County because there's still a lot more vacant land, a lot more lots to choose from. 
So those are those are probably our biggest constraints is land available. If there's land available that people want to buy, then we can build and people can come that ahead. So What's that? You mentioned lot cost, lot improvement, permit costs. Permit costs vary by city. I'd say Murray right now, I think I think the lot the permit cost is about seventy five hundred. Um, I know Lehigh is about twenty two thousand. So that's another thing that could kill a deal for us is you know, real excited all of a sudden you yeah, have to add twenty grand on top of the bill to make the deal not work. So so that twenty six hundred to consider the seventeen hundred did that include a lot? Very um, seventeen hundred thousand did that include a lot? No. Or is that yeah. just the so bill? just the construction price. And then you have a lot, then you have the permit and, and then a lot for the cost. So the only reason we do that that way is because we just don't know. Like we there are just things we don't know until we figure out where the lot is. Um, because we just we don't know obviously permit costs, we don't lot permit costs, we don't know what the lot's gonna cost. So, yeah. you act as an agent on these transactions? Uh, depends on the scenario. Uh, for instance, I, I work with a lot of real estate agents. So I represent the builder, I represent their client. Um, it really just depends. So. Where did the majority of your clients come from? Just refer out the question. Word of mouth, referral. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, that's, that's probably where most of it. We don't do a ton of advertising because then our costs go up. You know, so we really try and do word of mouth referral, just meet new people, say, hey, we were doing something a little bit different from what other people are doing. We think there's some advantages. Go ahead. How about the progress of the company? Like first year, how many houses did you build? Second year, how many houses did you build? And how is that expanded as a We're working on our model because because for us, success isn't necessarily it's more having more more of a profitable company than it is based on necessarily the number of homes. For instance, we actually are working on this year. Our goal is to build less homes, but more expensive homes. So we're designing currently designing, uh, you know, more homes for mountain areas and larger homes um, because it's just often for us it makes sense. So we've got about current projects we're working on. We've got about five or six either under construction or in the design phase that we're currently. <laughs> um, this this iteration um, with this partnership about a year and a half. They've been building for 15 years. We just have a little bit different of a model, a business model, than what other people are doing. Are they bringing in customers? Um, I'm bringing in most of the customers. So, so for you, for, like your business, in a year and a half, you have about five to six houses in various stages of the process. That's what we're currently starting right now. So what about so the first six months first year? First year, I don't know how many they did. I mean, we we have the ones that we do together, and they have their own. But what about the ones they do together? Um, mostly remodels. You know, this is a new model for us. So this is where we're really getting about five or six going right now. So, so this is over the course of their their career, I have no idea. Well, I was just asking that you were starting to work with them. Like, how long is it taking to, to get sales? <laughs> it took us about six months to wrap things up from our first meeting to we're actually turning dirt on home just to just because the process takes that long. And then that so, next year is what yeah, you. so this year should be our this year we're projecting just based on all the clients we're currently working with, we're thinking we're gonna do about 20. You know, for the second year basically. Yeah. So that's kind of what we've got either lined up, we're currently designing, people are looking at lots. That's kind of what we're thinking. But we really, probably year two is probably, we'll probably pull it back and try to do 15, but more expensive homes. So. Do you work with any partners, or is it just you and the builders? Just me and the builders. So yeah, I mean, I some cool things, but definitely we have a long ways to go. We're trying to innovate and create, and I figured I'd just share with you guys what we've currently done, maybe share some new ideas, help you guys maybe look at things a little bit differently. And there's a lot of ways to go, it really depends on the situation. You know, I just met with somebody this morning where, um, you know, the, the meeting we had last night in Park City, it makes a lot of sense for us to do it for because it just makes more sense. The one this morning, we met on, it might make more sense for them to go a different direction. But what we did is we say, here's what we do, 
you know, for the right person it makes sense, for the wrong person it doesn't make sense. So. What did you say the top clients are? Um, it really varies. So we've had clients move in with anywhere from 10 to 20 percent versus the market. So um, the problem is we just, you know, we don't guarantee anything like that. It's just say, hey, let's get the lot, let's design the home, get the bid out, and then go see what else things are selling for and see how much you're coming out. So it's 10 to 20 percent going back to between you and the builder? No, it's just, you know, we're not taking that. We're, the people moving in are just, because all we do is we just want to build. Take the profit on it. We have a group of investors that we're building homes for right now, um, and they're keeping all the profit. We just want to build. That's where we make our money. So you're taking that salary? Uh, just commission base. So what's that? Uh, it depends. So, go ahead. I'd like to see some of the plans and make those available publicly. Yeah, I mean, we just have them on our website. I mean, really, the plans, I would say, the plans aren't that special. You know, it's just normal. Normal home you see everywhere. Um, where people are coming out ahead is just basically finding good deals on a lot. We don't charge a lot. We don't have a ton of overhead. That's what people are coming out. So, I mean, you see the plans, you're like, well, I see that everywhere. Yeah, well, that's what we did, you know, because that's what people want to build. So, I think, you know, it really depends on the right situation. Um, the people that are coming out ahead, the ones that are building the accessory apartments right now are really coming out ahead uh, because it works for them. You know, it may not work for everybody. Um, those people are going to be able to live in the home for really inexpensive because the way it sounds for them. So. Have you looked at or tested your model whether it would work for smaller, more affordable housing? You know, we just have to, right now, we we just find a client and find out what they want to build and build that for them. So it really is just based on consumer demand. You know, so um, if people want to build smaller, we can fit it out and price it out and see if it makes sense. So. Well, great. Well, hopefully, hopefully, there's some new knowledge for people. Hopefully, we're able to accomplish some of our goals. We're definitely working on innovating and improving. We're not perfect yet, but we're trying to get there. So, thanks so much. Cool. And if you guys have more questions, I'm happy to sit up time and meet one.